Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Royal Highness the Deputy King and Crown Prince Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Decree 39 of 2021, amending Article 1 of Decree 1 of 2011 on establishing the Higher Committee for Natural Resources and Economic Security. The decree states the following. Regarding Article 1 on establishing the Higher Committee for Natural Resources and Economic Security, a new item, number 2, is added, and the rest of the items are renumbered accordingly as follows. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, National Security Advisor, Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely. The cabinet welcomed the outcomes of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's virtual meeting with the President of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro, who will praise His Majesty's commitment to promoting peace and good relations with other friendly nations. The cabinet stressed the importance of continued cooperation with the National Audit Office in order to protect fixed public assets and strengthen oversight, accountability and responsibility in consolidating the principle of integrity across all government agencies. The cabinet reviewed a report submitted by the Minister of Foreign Affairs on the outcomes of the 147th session of GCC Ministerial Council held in Saudi Arabia, which reflects the strength of regional ties and the shared regional position on external threats, including a clear commitment to the principle of non-intervention and the internal affairs of states. The cabinet condemned the drone attack by Houthi militia on Saudi Arabia, which deliberately targeted energy, infrastructure and supplies, and affirmed Bahrain's full support for all measures taken by Saudi Arabia to safeguard its citizens and national security. In this regard, His Royal Highness praised the important role Saudi Arabia plays in regional security and stability, as well as in the global economy. The cabinet discussed several memorandums during the meeting and approved the following. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on regulating the importation and circulation of apparel products, amongst other imports, to ensure they meet all necessary licenses from concerned authorities. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance on the timeline for the implementation of the wage protection system which regulates the timely transfer of income through banks. A memorandum from the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments on amendments to the rules of evidence in civil and commercial matters to keep abreast of development and consultancy services. A memorandum from the Minister of Foreign Affairs on the annual report submitted to the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons on Chemical Activities in the Kingdom of Bahrain. A memorandum from the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism on the regulation of online sales including home-cooked meals through Sijilli and the Ministry of Labor and Social Development's Khatwa program in order to protect consumer rights. His Royal Highness directed to offer online sellers two regulation options. Khatwa offered free of charge to families registered with the Ministry of Labor and Social Development or virtual commercial registration via Sijilli in accordance with the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism's regulations which grants access to financial packages including Tim Keen's business continuity program as well as competitive financial schemes. A memorandum from the Ministry of Com Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to six proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The cabinet reviewed a memorandum from the Minister of Labor and Social Development on the progress of the ministry's key construction projects. The National Guard Commander, His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa, met during his visit to Pakistan the Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff Committee, General Nadim Raza. The two sides discussed topics of common interest, reviewing many aspects to develop military cooperation. The President praised the advanced levels of cooperation and military exchange between the two countries, highlighting Pakistan's role in maintaining global and regional security and stability. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawziya Zainal, hailed the directive of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on offering citizens with online businesses the opportunity of free voluntary sign-up to Khutwa program for productive families. She noted that the directive affirms the constructive cooperation between the government and the Representatives Council and implementation of the royal directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. She added that the directive is an affirmation of the government's keenness on supporting citizens' affairs. She affirmed that the Representatives Council always fulfills citizens' requests and provides the best options for them in various fields.
The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, hailed the directive of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on offering citizens with online businesses the option of free voluntary sign up to Khutwa program for productive families. He affirmed that the directives of His Royal Highness reflect his interest in fulfilling citizens' aspirations and needs, expressing appreciation for His Royal Highness's swift response to the matter. He stated that offering options for online business owners is a responsible and appreciated initiative as it came in line with the suggestions and visions of representatives, business owners, and public opinion. Al-Saleh also commended the efforts of the Minister of Industry, Commerce, and Tourism, as well as all officials at the ministry. On the occasion of the World Down Syndrome Day, which falls on the 21st of March, the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, affirmed that the ministry is keen on providing support for children with Down Syndrome through the policy of integration, noting that there are currently 120 students with Down Syndrome attending public schools in the kingdom. To speak more about the support of the Ministry of Education to this issue, we are joined by the Special Education Specialist at the Ministry, Hawazan Yusuf Zainal. Hello, Ms. Hawazan. Tell us about the efforts of the Ministry of Education in providing quality education to students with special needs in general and those with Down syndrome in particular. Hello and good afternoon. Uh, well, the Ministry of Education is highly dedicated in providing quality education for students with special needs. It assures to give the accessibility and programs for students with all types of special needs, like intellectual disabilities, visual and hearing impairments, autism, and physical disabilities because it believes in the importance of having independent individuals that are capable of developing the kinder of Bahrain. Having said that, the ministry have provided mainstream classes in 59 schools, serving the students with mild intellectual disabilities and Down syndrome. These classes provide a curriculum that suits their abilities and needs. Aside of the academic subjects like math, Arabic, Islamic studies, it provides non-academic subjects such as life skills and self-care skills, which is so essential to students with Down syndrome. These classes are serving 120 students with Down syndrome in the meantime, between the primary and intermediate schools. In addition to that, um, the students have the chance to socialize with their peers in so many activities and to attend classes like art, sports, and IT with them. Um, after completing the age of 15, uh, the students with the Down syndrome join the three-year professional qualification program to prepare them for certain occupations. And how did the ministry assure shifting to digital education specifically for those students? Yeah, due to the current pandemic, the Ministry of Education shifted to digital live learning for students with special needs. Uh, well, the procedures included uh, online meetings with parents to discuss the upcoming schedules. After that, online meetings with each student uh, to assess them in order for the teachers to prepare their private educational plans. Uh, and the actual learning uh, was applied by online live sessions using former platforms. And then by setting uh, virtual lessons to the students. Also, the ministry provided more than 135 virtual lessons that is downloaded in the formal education portals for parents to have as a support in their child's learning process. Special Education Specialist at the Ministry of Education, Hawazan Yusuf Zainal, thank you for joining us. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Ahmedan, hailed the directive of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to allow citizens with online businesses to choose free voluntary sign-up to the Khutwa program for home-based businesses under the supervision of the Ministry of Labor and Social Development to benefit from the features of the program or joint Sajili program for commercial activities that can be practiced virtually under the supervision of the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. Ahmedan affirmed that providing alternatives for the youth, entrepreneurs and productive of families who promote their products on social media asserts the government's interest in protecting them and its keenness on allowing them to develop their businesses. For his part, the Ministry of Industry, the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Zayani, hailed the directive of His Royal Highness. He emphasized the ministry's endeavor to provide entrepreneurs the starting project with an opportunity to grow and expand their businesses, which reflects the government's keenness on developing business environments according to a legal framework without disclaiming its provisory responsibility. 
Executive Chairman of Tamkeen, Hussein Mohammed Rajab, affirmed the continuation of work to achieve the strategic objectives pursued by Tamkeen to provide support to individuals and institutions in the Kingdom of Bahrain. He also said that Tamkeen is continuing to enhance the effective contribution to the growth and the sustainability of the private sector. He noted the pioneering role of Tamkeen plays and its role in advancing development through innovative, creative and pioneering solutions to invest in the development of the private sector. Rajab pointed out the need to continue building on the positive results that Tamkeen has achieved during its years of operation to provide more support for the national economy and to build on the strategic frameworks it has developed for the coming years, stressing the importance of co coordination and cooperation of all concerned parties in order to provide a pioneering economic experience to the Kingdom of Bahrain. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 417,364 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 235,872 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 7,048, with 628 recoveries, 656 registered new cases and two deaths. 31 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 405 are contacts of active cases, and 31 are travel-related. The deceased were an 82- and a 62-year-old citizens. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.